Hello and welcome to Superhero Sunday on Hackney Church Everywhere. As we head into a time of worship, would you pray with me? Lord, we pray that you would fill this time. Would you lead us to discover more of your presence and to meet with you again this Sunday? In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. That silences the enemy And let praise be the weapon that conquers all anxiety And let it rise Let praise arise We'll sing your name in the dark and it changes everything We'll sing with all we are and we'll claim your victory and let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high with all creation cry. inside of me and let it rise let faith arise let it rise we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall fear cannot survive when we praise you the God of breakthroughs on our side forever lift you high with all This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive.
Hi guys, it's Hannah from The Lighthouse Project here. I'm in one of our locations, Leighton, um, at one of our Lighthouse sessions that we put on each week. i um, been here since uh, COVID times, been helping out front of house mainly, but packing and dishing out food and hot drinks. I am doing the forum internship. I'm living in Leighton, I'm serving in Leighton, I'm attending the church service. Um, it's an exchange of stories and it's people from all walks of life. It's not just get your food and go, but actually it's personal. We, we, we care about the people that come here, we care about their dreams and their ambitions and we see them um, for who they are, not just their circumstance. Uh, recently, a um, phone call received regarding the lady in Leytonstone. Um, the council couldn't get any food for her for f three or four days and it was Friday. Um, so uh, the great people in the vicarage were able to uh, gather some stores together um, I collected the bag and within an hour we would make a delivery. I knocked on the door, answered by an emotional lady who was in tears and crying. She was happy to see us and thankful for what we bought for her. Um, which is such an honour and a privilege to be part of this community and be part of Light Lighthouse. Thank you so much to every single person that makes the Lighthouse Project happen. Thank you for all of those of you who are praying at home. Thank you for everybody who is giving and thank you to everyone who is serving. It really makes such a difference. I'd love to invite you to continue to give, continue to pray and continue to sow into the work that we're doing at the Lighthouse Project.
How exciting. I just want to second Hannah in saying a massive thank you to all of you who help out with what is happening through Lighthouse. If you'd like to get involved or find out more, we definitely need your help. So head over to hackney.church slash join in. None of the amazing stories coming out of the life of our church would be possible if it wasn't for all of your generosity. So thank you so much for all that you give. If you're interested in finding out more how you can give into the life of this community, we like to make some space for you to do that now. That's all for Church News. See you later. Well, hey, my name is Samuel and welcome to Superhero Sunday. Traditionally, on this Sunday, we celebrate All Saints Day. This is a moment to remember the saints who have gone before us. These are men and women who gave us an example of what it means to live for God. For all you kids out there, these are our superheroes. Today, we look at the superheroes of the faith past to remind you and me that we can be superheroes for God today. Hebrews 12 tells us that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses to the life of faith. And the writer of Hebrews lists loads of people we can look to. You know, Bible story characters and how they lived a life of faith for God. People like Noah, Sarah, Abraham, Moses and Rahab. But today, I want to tell you about one of my favourite superheroes from the Bible. And that person's name is John. John was one of Jesus' closest followers, one of the 12 disciples. John saw things that other people did not see. He was a visionary. He was present along with Peter and James at Jesus' transfiguration when Jesus lit up like the sun on top of a mountain. And John, he even describes himself in his writings as the one whom Jesus loved. Another time we hear of John is when he was sat next to Jesus, when Jesus had his last meal with his friends before he died. Jesus was talking about who would betray him. And John, leaning on Jesus' chest, said, Who is it, Lord? Who is going to betray you? And Jesus answered him, it is the one who I give this morsel after it is dipped. John, you see, he asked direct questions of Jesus and Jesus answered him. Jesus shared his secrets with John. He trusted him and he loved him. He was one of his closest friends. But the bit of the Bible I'd love for us to look at this morning is in Revelation. John's last book and the last book of the Bible written to Christians under pressure. This is what John writes to us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 to 16. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. John, he was isolated on a Greek island called Patmos as a punishment because he was telling people about Jesus. 
Now we might not think that being stranded on a Greek island is punishment. I mean, we might think that that sounds quite nice, especially right now. But John, he was isolated and alone. And some of us know what that feels like right now. Maybe we're isolating due to COVID or for other related issues. John was completely alone, and he was worshiping. And in that place of solitude, in that confinement, something wonderful happens. He has an encounter with Jesus. He has a vision of Jesus that is so real. It's almost like it's happening in real time. And Jesus, he looks amazing, so powerful and heavenly in a robe with a gold sash across his chest, the very same chest which John had laid on. He's glowing and shiny and a sword is coming out of his mouth. That means he's got something sharp, something powerful to say. Jesus goes on to dictate the whole book to him, which John dutifully writes down. It's a book about what is going on in heavenly realms. It's got encouragements for the church and it's got pictures and visions of spiritual forces. And critically, later on, John also sees loads and loads of worshippers in heaven, fellow worshippers. Remember, he is alone, isolated on an island. But this vision Jesus gives him reminds him he is part of something bigger. He is not alone. He is one of these countless worshippers. In a moment, the emptiness is suddenly filled with Jesus in his heavenly glory. And all these other worshippers of Jesus too. I wonder if that's a picture of encouragement for us. For times when we might feel isolated, imagine this great cloud of witnesses around us cheering us on and worshipping Jesus together. But the main point I want us to take away today is that John's superpower was his proximity to Jesus. At Hackney Church, we talk about proximity as one of our core values. It means being close to people and being present with people. That might be a challenge for us right now when we are social distancing, but we can be close to people in our hearts. We can pray for them and we can be emotionally close even when physically distant. John's superpower was that he was close to Jesus. Remember, John describes himself as the one Jesus loved. He defines himself by his relationship to Jesus. And I find that really challenging. I'm someone who likes to be my own person. Don't put me in a box. Don't define me by my relationship to other people. And yet my relationship with God is what makes me come alive. I am more of who I am when I give myself to Jesus. When I make him the Lord of my life, he does not diminish me. He makes me bigger. He makes me more Samuel-like, more alive in who I am and who he created me to be. My closeness to Jesus, that is my superpower. When I wake up in the morning, my favorite thing to do is to go to the kitchen and make myself a cup of beautiful pour over coffee, freshly ground beans. Mm. And then I take it to the front room and I sit. And there, as I sit on the sofa, I pray. I tell God I'm grateful for him and I ask him to be with me throughout the day. My secret is prayer. It's in prayer that I get access to my superpower. It's in prayer that I get close to Jesus. Do you want to live a life that makes other people ask you, what's your secret? 
What is your secret? How can you smile during lockdown? How come you seem to overcome your fears? How can you love other people the way that you do and pour yourself out for them? The secret is simple: prayer, proximity to Jesus. I'd love to invite you, just like John did, to lay your head on Jesus's heart. Imagine laying your head next to Jesus, right where you are, and ask him, "Lord, what's on your heart? How do you see my situation? What's going on with that thing, Lord, that I can't quite figure out?" I encourage you to listen, just like Jesus replied directly to John. I believe. He wants to reply directly to you. Remember, get close, be proximate to Jesus. He is your superpower. It was John's superpower. It's my superpower, and it's yours too. With Jesus as your superpower, you can be a superhero for God today. Let's pray together right now. Father, thank you for sending your Son Jesus to us. Thank you, Lord God, that you are not distant, but that in your Son Jesus, you are the God who comes close. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, help us now. To draw near to you through prayer, to invite you in to our everyday life, and find access to power in you, Lord God. Pray, Lord Jesus, that we might live with you, walk with you, and be a superhero for you today. Amen. Another way when the walls are closing in, and when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire.
He who was as the lives and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things I've seen and this reckoning. So come what may in the space between all the things I see and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Yes, Lord. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great week.